Today we're going to talk about background vocals. Now, uh, we're going to specifically focus in on a couple of techniques involving background vocals. I'm going to show you a little bit about panning and uh, then a little bit about balancing. And I've selected a, a simple background part, two notes, that way we can focus on the techniques and not, uh, not anything else. Now, in the 90s, we used to like to pan songs, pan backgrounds really wide, uh, wider than the mix. And we'd use different techniques to get the background vocals to feel like they were outside the speaker, the edges of the speakers. Now, that's still cool today for some songs, but by and large, we like to hear things a little tighter because we're listening to earbuds and things, and so if something's too wide, it can be a little distraction, distracting or it can be fun. That's your, that's your decision. You're the technical, you're the creative person too. Now, I'm gonna show you a little bit of both today. Let's start off with a panning example. There's several choices. We've got different harmony notes. I've selected a song that's got two harmony notes, now, but if you had 20 different harmony notes, you could, it's the same principle. If your lead is being supported by the background, so in other words, the lead singer uh, just keeps singing the, the lead and the backgrounds are just harmony notes of that lead, I would tend to pan the, the low notes, the low harmony notes, a little wider than the high harmony notes. Now in some songs, some, some R&B songs and some rap songs, the backgrounds become the lead in the chorus and then the lead singer ad-libs over those. In that case, I'd put the low notes a little more towards the center and the high harmony notes a little wider. Now you can do it reverse, it's just my choice. I like that, I like that sound. So let's start out with a part where the, uh, we, would, we would pan the high note wider and the low note closer to the middle. This would be where the leads are, where the backgrounds become essentially lead parts in the background vocals. This is an artist, Kyrie London. Her, her new album is called Rainbow City, produced by Rudy. Pretty cool record, check it out. Let's start with them both wide. Your love is under, gone away. Okay, now what I would do is I'd bring the low note in a little bit. Your love is under, gone away. See the difference? It fills a part in the middle so that when the singer ad-libs over this, there's something in the middle. And, and, and it gives depth, it, it just it creates a, uh, something pretty cool for headphones. Now if we had a middle note, we would park that in between panning wise and then the, the low note would still be the uh, closest one to the center. Now let's try the opposite. Okay, now we have the high note panned in a little. This is the difference. Your love is under, gone away. Your love is under, gone away. You know what, just for me personally, of the two versions, it just sounds kind of cooler on this song with that part with the high note a little bit towards center, doesn't it, Will? So you've got, you've got choices. Now I would use this if the lead singer was singing along. Now, I, as you can tell, I'm dumping these into an aux. And the, one of the main reasons I do that is to have a little control over the overall level for the mix. But also, let's say we're, we're listening to this and we're like, golly, maybe it should be a little, a little narrower. So just bring in your aux. Your love is under, gone away. Your love is under, gone away. So that's with the aux in. Bring it, let's bring the ox in a little more. So that's adding to these now. Your love is under, gone away. Now, now where would you use something like that? Well, in a rock song, a lot of times you don't want the backgrounds to be too distracting. So, and then here's full wide again. Your love is under, gone away. So probably, Maybe early in the song, I might, like through the first chorus, I might bring it in a little bit and then make it a little wider as we go along. If it were a pop song, if it was a, a, a rap song. Sometimes I, I leave the background vocals pretty wide on a rap, but, but most, more, than, more often than not, I'll, if it's actual singing part, I'll bring those in a little bit. And you can just do that on an aux or whatever DAW you're using calls it. Now another technique I use is, if you've been paying attention here, you'll notice that that this is, this is my automation line and my, uh, my high part, I let it get louder as the song goes along just to add a little bit of excitement. So in the first chorus it would be Your love is under, gone away. Then a DB up for the second chorus Your love 
the sun to gone away. The second course is a double course, so the first time the sun. I leave it the same level as the first chorus, then it's a double chorus. So the second half of the double chorus goes from my excitement level's picking up. Now here's the third chorus, it goes up another dB. The sun, the and then for the vamp, we're screaming. We, we, got, we want them heading for the music store to buy this or heading to iTunes. Wow, did you feel that energy level drop when I went back to the first chorus? So now we've got a way to build and, 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 get, and get, get, the, uh, get the chorus a little more exciting. Now the way I choose the blend, let's call it, is I love harmony parts. And the harmony parts that just capture my imagination are the ones that sound like a chord. In other words, when I hear the various notes, it sounds like one note to me, um, even though it might be two or three or a hundred notes. And I don't like one note to stick out. Now I've got two notes, but I'm going to show you a little bit what happens. So try to do your blend to where you don't really hear individual notes. Just let your mind wander, walk into another room and listen. If you hear individual notes, then tweak the blend a little more to where it just sounds like one nice lush chord. Now we're doing it with two notes, but it's the same concept. And the reason I chose two notes is because I think it's a little easier to, to grasp the concept. So let's start with the high note playing. Now I'm going to start adding the low note. Okay, everybody, everybody following at home, yell when to stop. I like that. Why do I like it? Because it's closer to a two note chord than it is two individual notes. Did you notice as I came up, even though the high note has more energy, at a certain point, you could feel it, couldn't you? It, 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 so so, so you, it gets logarithmically more complicated every time you add another note. So let's go past this point and see if we ruin it. Okay, now the energy of the high note just got squashed. It just got like annihilated. So go through and do, do two notes. Then add a third note and, and, and do the same thing to the process. And, and this isn't a right or wrong thing. It's a feel. It's a vibe. It's, you just want to trust your instincts. I mean, we all listen to so much music, and we, we have opinions about the music we listen to. Objectively transfer that process to your own creation. And then here again, once we get a blend we like, we can control that inside the mix with our aux. So... That's, that, that's kind of the way I think about background vocals now. If you want to make it a little wider, there's a million things. We've done whole shows on this. Here's the blend we liked. Here's a little wider. We can do the same thing. We can make the first chorus a little a little bit narrower and then we can we can go ballistic on this last one you know it's just a MS plugin but it's very basic I can control how much of the center I have I can control how much of the sides and I can use those to, to my advantage your love is undergone the way your love is toxic yeah your love is undergone the way now you can do this with any, any MS plugin like Dr. MS or some of the great stuff from Brainworks. And that gives you a spot to sit the lead in if you need, if you need it. If, if you want the backgrounds to be the lead, uh, you can add more of the center. So we've got options with the backgrounds. We can control the energy flow in the song. We can make the song build. Back in the old days, we used to say, um, if I drop the needle on the song, Within one bar, I should know exactly where I'm at because of the feel, the vibe, the way the instruments change. So if you drop the needle on the first chorus, you feel a little energy. You drop the needle on the last chorus, you feel more energy. And that, that's the way a song should build. It should build like that. That's what we're doing here. Next time.